Congratulations on an amazing season. When you started this season, did you have goals that included winning the Scudetto? And I mean, how did you see it panning out? When when we started at first, you know, there are some great players that left, uh, left the club, and amazing players, uh, legends of the club. And um, I recall when, when the preseason, when, um, after the training, so Frank um, walked up to me and we were like talking about, you know, some of the few players that we saw as rumor that are coming to the club and everything like that. And I, and, I t and I told him that if we really believe in ourselves, I think we can actually win one or two trophies the, the, this season. And then uh, he said, of course, anything is, anything is possible. So the coach walked up, walk up to us and early joined in a conversation. And it was like, oh, what were we saying? And, and I was like, oh, we were say, talking about our new season coming up and everything. That uh, I was telling to Frank that we can actually win something if we actually believe in ourselves. And then he said, of course, uh, easier to guide us, easier to help us if we play as a team and work together and give our all as a team, we can actually do something. So as at that time, the start of the season, I was really optimistic like that we can actually do an amazing thing. So the guys that came in also blend well with us and then phew, we went so good. And um, for the dream just became rea reality in, in the space of how many months. And we finally won the Scudetto in 33 years. It's, it's really a good feeling for me. Amazing. Uh, you recall when you joined two years ago and there was a major controversy. You talked about uh, filling the shoes of, of Diego Maradona and there was an uproar. There was disbelief like, who could, how could you say that? <laughs> you look back now, what do you think? Have you <laughs> come close to filling <laughs> <in> those shoes? <laughs> no, I'm not. Um... I can never be anything close to close to Maradona. You know, he's for me, for me, he's the best player in the whole world. And for what he's done for this club, I think uh, when I first came, I went to the city. I took took a tour around the, the city, and the way they idolize him is <laughs> for me, it's unbelievable. You know, for what he's given them as a club, as a city, for the people, it's I don't know how to words. I don't know how to put in words to justify. The kind of feeling they have for for him, he's a demigod here, yeah, and uh, no player that would come now, no matter how many scudetto you won for this club, Maradona is still like a demigod, and will be a demigod for them to the end of this, to the end of this world. And for me to be able to to come in and and do my bit for them, yeah. and make sure the the scudetto come home for a long time, yeah. it's a huge honor and a big privilege. For me, you know, I see some some mirrors where Maradona, the drew Maradona, and I'm close to Maradona. For me, it's a big honor. <laughs> a boy from Mauritius who know I would have thought that I would have my picture on the on the on the walls of Napoli, close to the greatest player ever, Maradona. For me, it's uh, it's like it's like a dream. Yeah. But I really appreciate the love. And for me, just like I said earlier, nothing the player would do here. That would be compared to what Maradona has done for this yeah. for this club. They love him so much. Yeah. He's like a demigod, yeah. and I have huge respect and honor yeah. for, for, for. for for you for the for the legacy you created in this city. The fans love you. We see them just in a few minutes ago. I remember the last time I was here, 4 a.m. after dinner, and they were still outside waiting. How have you embraced this? Is it overwhelming or you, you love it? How have you managed it? The, the, love, is, the love is really overwhelming. It's, it's huge. And um, I've given my all for them. And they know that anytime I go on the pitch, mm. the first thing I think in my mind is to defend the badge of Napoli. And secondly, is for the fans. Mm. And they know that I play for them. I run for them. I do everything mm. for them. Whether we win, we win or we lose or we drew, I give my all for them. Mm. I try to make sure that they are satisfied and feel so good. And to get this love back from them, it's it's a huge one. I have never seen a city more crazy with football than the way the Napolitans are. Mm. And they show their all, all their players love. And wherever I go to, I'm being respected. You know, kids love me. You know, a lot of people admire me. A lot of kids idolize me by putting on my replica of my mask. 
I think for me it shows the, the hard work I have given to them and what I mean to them. Mm. And for me, I, I don't think I there's no better place to be than in this place. And I'm so happy that I made the right choice by coming here and achieving this type of greatness mm. with the Napolitan, something that I will wake up and always smile about. My children, children, we we come into this world and realize that their father has done something amazing for, for the Napolitans mm. and the love they have shown me. Even when I came to the club, when I was having some kind of difficulties in settling down well yeah. and everything like that, the love that I received from them, it's, it's really an amazing. So for me to pay them back is to deliver this good day. I'm so happy that I was able to achieve this with the rest of my teammates. We did this all together and I'm really happy about this film. You talked about coming from Olusho soon. Uh, we are, you and I have talked about it. I walked very close there and I know how it was. I, I'm sure we walked in the same parts, mm -hmm. ate in the same places. And both of us are sitting together here in the heart of Naples. You, the great football champion. I am a journalist. We've come so far, you yeah. know, both as young yeah. Nigerians. Yeah. 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 But for you, you wake up and think is is a dream. It's <laughs> like every other, <laughs> just like you said, you're almost you're close to to Olusha, so, so you mm. know how how the the community mm. is so small, mm. and um, how there is a dump site close to the community where sometimes we used to get mm. we used to get wood. For me personally, for me, the street where I came from, not even the street there, the place where I came from. Just like I used to say, nothing is promised. Absolutely, nothing is promised. If you have to get uh, five euro, you have to work so hard for it. You have to sweat for it. Nobody's going to give you anything for free there. Mm. And why I'm so happy about my breakthrough is that nobody gave me 50% chance or 20% chance of making it out of the trenches. Mm. Absolutely. Not just me, my whole family. Like, nobody, absolutely nobody. When you go there, the street where I was born, and you ask them how many chances you gave to this guy's family to make it, hmm. to become something in life, to have m multiple things to do, to have food to eat anytime they want, they will tell you probably 5%, 10%. So for me to walk my way up there through the help of God, I think I have shown them the keys there, a lot of people there that when you work so hard diligently, and your focus on where you want to be, mm -hmm. I think anything is possible with God. Mm -hmm. So I think for me now, just like they used to say, I became legend for them, and a lot of them look up to me. So most of the time when I'm playing, I think about those that actually believe in me, those that look up, look up to me, to make sure that I continue to achieve greatness and success so that I can inspire them, that no matter your background and everything like that, you can, you can really make it. Mm -hmm. In, in football, there's, uh, I mean, especially in professional football, everybody comes from different countries, different homes, and they are told they are the best in their home. You know, your father tells you are the best, go and win. Uh, his mother tells you are the best. How have you navigated the egos in the dressing room for, I mean, at Napoli, at the national, how have you, especially at Napoli, how have you navigated the egos and going on to win the, uh, the, the Scudetto this year? First of all, I did my own uh, criticism at first, and I know what um, what I want to do, the kind of player that I've you know put in my head to become mm. when I started this this journey of becoming a, a pro football player. Mm. Then, um, first of all, my brother is a hustler, so he doesn't really have time to watch me play. My father would never watch me play. Mm. Until when I was at the under 17 World Cup final, where my sisters took him to our neighbors that I had a gen on to watch me. That was the first time ever he watched me play. So for me, a lot of people would tell me, ah, oh, you're so good, you're the best. You know, these are love because they see what I'm doing and they, they say, oh, you're the best. But I appreciate this, you know, this compliment. I don't let this get into my head because for me personally, I'm still working progress. But for how far that I've come, I think I've come for like one to eight. You know, I can lie, I have to give myself my own flower also because mm -hmm. I've become one of the most prolific striker in the world. And for me, this is, 
this boils down to a lot of hard work, a lot of sleepless night, dedication, sweat, tears, and blood that I've put into this job. And um, when someone tell me these things, I appreciate it from the depth of my heart because for you to leave this person and come to appreciate me for my work, it shows that you see one or two things in me. And that's the reason why when someone compliment me, I always say thank you more than five times because mm -hmm. I appreciate these things. Mm -hmm. And even the ones that told me you're not good enough, you're not doing these, you don't do that, even, I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Because I remember the time when I went to the under 17, I was doing so well, I was scoring a lot of, a lot of goals. So there's, these, there's always one, one man close to the gate that will call me and say, listen to me. Don't listen to the hype. People are calling your name. Oh, you are only because they are only said was in 2013. Ah, you're like how only you similar. You do don't listen to them. You have a long way to go. So when I go back to to my hotel, I used to reminisce on this word. And the man didn't just say it first one time, two times, three times. He said it multiple times until I went uh, with the under 17. So I had this stock in my head that I still have a long way to go. You know if. Um, the likes of DJ Droga have achieved football, you know, play football to the highest level, score a lot of goals, win a lot of trophies, and then I think I have the potential to also, you know, emulate mm -hmm. even if it's fifty percent of what he's done for football, for himself also, to put his name in the world map yeah. in terms of legends of the game. I think I have the, the ability. So this is why I keep on working so hard like I'm still there on the 17th. This mm. is what keeps me really going. Wow. And I remember our first ever interview, you told me about Droba. You've always insisted on Droba. I mean, and the, when I, when I uh, in, uh, questioned Jose Mourinho at the press conference in January, he told me you are at that level. Do you agree? Do you accept? For, for Mourinho is considered the best coach. Uh, in the world, and to get this kind of compliment from you, although he said I did, he said no. So, what did he tell you that day? <laughs> he, when I, after I, I was injured in my yeah. small step on my wrist, yeah. so he got peeled, and uh, I was coming to to go in. Then he came close to me, and he said, uh, "Good, uh, good go, but don't do that. Don't try to, don't try to dive." And um, keep going. He, he told me to keep on going like this, that I'm on the right path. And when he said don't die, so I, I had to close my mouth and, and said to him that I don't I don't make uh, stimulations. Yeah. I was I was pushed and I showed him my hand and yeah. he hit me in the head and, and told me just go on, go, go on, go just on. keep on playing. Yeah. So to to hear this type of compliment. From, from right the, in the middle of the game. Right in the middle of the game. Against his team. It's, it's, um, it's, for me, it's, it's, it's an amazing wow. feeling. Trust wow. me, it's an amazing feeling. You know, my friends called me after the game and they were like, what did, what did Moyo say to you? I was like, hey, he encourages me and mm. told me not to, not to dive and everything like that. So coming from someone, mm. this kind of a man, mm. a coach, you know, the best, if I'm not mistaken, the best in the world or something like mm. that. You know, for me, it's uh, it just a foil that I really need to. And he did say something continue. to me in a press conference. He said, if he had, if he was at a club that had money, he would buy you. Every, I think every uh, aspiring strikers, mostly when you're young, you have the opportunity to play under under him. Mm. I think uh, it's a huge honor, mm. you know, because he has shaped a lot of world class. Striker, did the Drogba play yeah. played under him, and we know the kind of beast he actually turned him into, mm. and he delivered for him. So, for me, it's a, it's a great play that Moreno actually spoke to me in the middle of the game and gave me this this um, compliment. This compliment, mm. it's, it's huge one for me. Mm. And I'm mm. for that. Fingers crossed. Perhaps Moreno gets to go to a club with money. And anyway, so um. I know that you like music. Uh, could you tell me what music you listen to? What, 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 who is your, who, which music you are going into the game? Which song are you playing before the game and uh, after the game? First of all, like during like my spare time after the the lunch when we were relaxing for like two three hours before the, the final meeting mm -hmm. to go to the stadium, I listened to to Olamide's rap. Because there's some kind of 
grab is done in recent recent years mm -hmm. that is really inspirational to me. I Olamide is my best uh, my best uh, musician actually in Nigeria, and uh, I used to listen. I have this playlist that you go to listen to the, to his song, and then after. Before I go for the for the team meeting, I say my prayers, mm -hmm. and after everything we're in the bus, I used to listen to Nas and Damian Mali, mm -hmm. only the strong survive. So this, when when I listen to these songs, I always put in my head that I'm going for war every time when I'm playing. I'm going for war, so only the strong survive. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm going there to die or someone's gonna die or something like that, but I feel like only the strong survive means I want to win. You know, I want to win, I don't want to lose. So these are the songs that I actually listen to that really give me the, the psych me up, you know, to go so hard in the game. You are very, in, you, you play very intensively. I've maybe thought if, I mean, your upbringing was, I mean, would contribute to how you play and this never say die attitude when you are, on, I mean, I was by the pitch side against Milan, and uh, your team was down one zero. But you still, you still kept pushing, and until you scored that goal, where did this come from? I grew up in a place where <laughs> you have to survive. You know, you have to survive. So as 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 a, as, a, as a young boy that came from a very poor poor family background, you know, you have to stick together and work. Um, so hard. So sometimes I sell pure water. Uh, sometimes I sell gala. Sometimes I sell. I do labor work. Mm. And then I feel like if you don't work, you don't you, you don't eat. So when I also went to the under seventeen, I when I was when it was it was not my turn. Amunike used to say, if you don't run, you will not play in my team. If you don't run. You cannot play football. Mm. You constantly needs to move every time. Needs to move every time. So I think that was one of the reasons why he actually fell in love with me, you know, mm. and guided me during that grade to make sure that he bring out the potential in me. Mm. And I think uh, this is everything that he taught us, or he taught me mm. in particular, gets stuck in my head. Mm. If I don't run in the game, I feel like I'm not there. It's better I just be on the bench. Yeah. I always want to go on. I always want to fight. I always want to like believe. You know, when I'm, when I'm one go down, two goes down, I always want to believe that mm. when you push so hard with the rest of your sport, the rest of your teammate, you can get a, you can get an amazing result. Yeah. You know, when one is when the, the whole eleven and two is not working hard, the rest of the, the nine, the job is the job is not done. So mm. when everyone just like just like my teammates the start of the season, mm. everyone was fighting. Mm. From the guys on the bench to the guys starting, everyone was fighting, mm. everyone was pushing so hard. Mm. So I think that this is the this is the, one of the the reason why I I, I run so hard. Mm. And trust me, I get tired before a lot of players there, but you will never see it in my in my in my face or wow. something. So I really want to go yeah. so hard and this is how I have uh, uh, mm. uh, been since since my childhood. My final question, what lessons uh, have you or are you taking away from this season and where what needs what is left for you to win in this game what 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 is your next aim first of all I've won one of the most prestigious um, um, uh, title in world football mm -hmm. and I won it with a with a club that appreciated the little things you do for them. Mm. And winning the Scudetto is a big one for me. You know, whatsoever trophy that comes after this mm. is also a big, a big one for me. Mm. Like the Champions League, like uh, the League Cup, and, and all sorts. But it, I'm so proud that I'm actually a Scudetto winner. It's a huge, for me, it's a huge one. Mm. It's really a huge one. So whatsoever, what, whatsoever honor that comes after this is also a huge one and I work on it mm. and I'm really working so hard to, to make sure now I'm addicted to trophy because, <laughs> <laughs> because now the Scudetto is like it's my first trophy as, yeah. a, as a pro mm. as, a, as a pro yeah so now I'm addicted 
and I can't wait for the, for the new season mm -hmm. to come. Congratulations on your MFR, Member of the Federal Republic. How does it feel to be, to be honored by the President of Nigeria? It feels so good, you know, to, to, to be recognized by uh, His Excellency mm -hmm. Mr. Um, Buari. Mm -hmm. It's a huge one. It's really a huge one. And I, and I didn't know at first. So um, after the game, I just saw a lot of messages from my from my friends showing me that uh, uh, they gave me the MFR uh, title. It's it's really it's really huge, and I appreciate this, and I won't take it for for granted. And I want to keep on to work, uh, work hard so that I can inspire the, the the younger generation coming up, and also do great things also and be recognized by by, by, by their country. Congratulations, Victor. Thank you so much.